properties, so that's, I think, a very special thing. Um, we as a church uh, not only get a needed infusion of uh, capital with which to pay down our debt, but I also want the uh, uh, community to recognize that that pay down in debt is going to result in our ability to do more things in the community in line with our mission of loving the community. And uh, for that, we're very grateful. Thank you. Um, so we, um, what we'd like to, I know that there was discussion two weeks ago, which I was, unfortunately, I was with a grandchild, so I wasn't present for, mm -hmm. so I pardon me for not being there. And I know that a specific part of some of the resolutions was discussed, and there was a difference in opinion between uh, the church and some of the county folk in terms of uh, how that should be interpreted. Um, we still think there's probably some difference of opinion, but we think that the overall um, deal, the overall proposal is so big, has so much good in it, and so much has uh, been put into the work. I, I come from business and I, I do know that uh, a really good deal is like a fish. It has a certain life expectancy <laughs> before it starts going different directions. And we think the time for closing that deal and moving forward uh, is, is now. And so we'd like to do that. And uh, we, again, uh, want to thank uh, all that were involved, uh, very specifically um, uh, both Rye and Dale Will. They were on the ground making this work. And it was a lot of discussion, a lot of time, a lot of give and take, a lot of thought. And uh, we just want to express particular appreciation for their skill, their effort, and their time. So thank you, commissioners. And we really look forward to having this uh, uh, deal done and executed and having some new neighbors in open space. So that's our comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank and you. so you know, I'm just finished finalizing some of the documents uh, just this afternoon, and I believe the closing is set for Friday. Is that correct? I understand. Yes, so thank you very much, and we look forward. That's great news. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for coming forward. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Yes, sir, please, come up, give your name for the public record. I'm David Scruggs, 212 West Hopkins, Aspen, Colorado. I just wanted to uh, say to County Manager John Peacock and to the Board of County Commissioners, this is a great building, job well done. Please show the city of Aspen how to do it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to speak? Please come forward. Thank you, sir. Please give your name for the record. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Lee Mulcahy, and uh, Patty, I hope you guys, Steve, uh, Greg, you had a great holiday. Um, the reason the reason I'm here, I just want to touch on a few things, is I do need three votes across the aisle on a resolution for a public hearing. Um, to that end, we did bring in 2,000 signatures to this board, and Jeanette was kind enough to put those in the public record, and thank you so much. Um, I have a great sense of humor, so I, I try never to fail to point out that the city of Aspen, despite multiple requests, refused to put that in their public record, um, those 2,000 signatures from citizens asking for a public hearing. I'm super grateful. I'm, I'm grateful to God, my family, uh, and this community. And, you know, before I came in here today, uh, you know, I touched base with our senior elder of my church and um, another elder, and I said, guys, what are your thoughts? Because, you know, they read the article from me yesterday, and they said, don't give up. And, and, and it's to, of course I wouldn't, I'm from Texas, but, <laughs> but you know, it's good to hear that from, from, from longtime uh, community members. Um, uh, you know, I, I want to I wanna reiterate that I do think that um, the APSHA attorney is a problem. Um, he's resistant to any kind of settlement. Um, he presents roadblocks, you know, uh, the entire way. And unfortunate, you know, it's, uh, I, I, to be frank, it's to pad his back pocket. And he has a history of doing this. He did it with um, when a, a citizen in Basalt asked for the text messages between the mayor and the city clerk the 20 days before the election that were deleted. 
he sued that citizen um, and charged $12,000. Um, I can go on and on and on, but a recent example, and she was here in public comment, was Amanda Tucker. She had a rental unit less than $1,000 a month, and yet the, the lease was going to expire anyway, and yet he decided to sue them. And so far, just so far, and this is like, you know, um, several months ago, he had racked up 22000 um, for suing to evict a woman and her son from the her unit, you know. I just think that sometimes his advice is not, is not productive for our community. It divides the community. Um, I want to be honest, you know, this is my pocket constitution, and we feel um, that our constitutional rights have been violated by APSHA. And the Fifth Amendment um, says, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Citizens, you are our elected officials. Um, I have been here time and time again. I want, you know, I'll, I'll briefly stand up. July 17th, their rules, APSHA rules, first compliance letter went out. By their own rules, they couldn't send a notice of violation until 60 days had gone by, September 15th, right? Now, they jumped the gun. They sent it out August 25th. Why is this important? It's because the whole order of the for sale of the house is based on this illegal, premature NOV. Now, the reason I, I give you this is APSHA hadn't decided what they counted, and you have the email, it's in your record, on what counted as an artist until October 14th. When I took the records in, citizens, they refused to look at them. All I'm asking is for a public hearing. I can show compliance per the law. The email says, it's from Julie Kiefer, I wanted to follow up on our conversation relating to the employment requirement of 1,500 hours per year. Blah, 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 blah. Some things you could provide include records of sales of your artwork, records of showings in galleries and museums. You know, so just since I, I, I'm, I, I've shown in the Nairobi National, which is East Africa's most prominent art gallery, I've shown in Berlin uh, KW, you know, contemporary, contemporary art, um, which is Berlin, one of Ber Berlin's, you know, main museums. And I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. But I, I want to, I have to point out, we're, in, at a, we're at a, in a very, very critical time in our country, and you, Democrats, and me, a family of Republicans, can come together and show the way forward, that, that, that there is compromise possible. And, and we have a Constitution. Um, I will follow the law. If I need to go to jail for six months, if that's what, we, we're not selling, okay? We're, 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 we're drawing the line in the sand. And, and we w I will follow the law. If you want political prisoners in Aspen, Colorado in 2019, well, you know, I'm real sorry. Um, but we feel that, that our, our constitutional rights to due process have been violated by, by, by this government. And, and uh, uh, I'm so grateful to my mom because <laughs> she's got a backbone of steel. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm sorry Thanks. if I went over. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you very much, Lee. Are there any other members of the public wishing to speak on items not on today's agenda? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the Board of Commissioners. Are there any comments from the commissioners? Greg, please. Um, I just, uh, the headlines lately have been pretty interesting, and today I just want to point out, make sure the public understands the, uh, the significance of the uh, understanding Holy Cross has, has reached in their announcement that Holy Cross Energy uh, will be getting to their goal of, uh, I think it was 70% renewable by 2030. They've announced they're going to get there by 2021 through a very innovative deal, uh, construction of a wind farm and a relationship with uh, Guzman Electric Ele Energy um, that is really innovative. And, and I would love if uh, perhaps some of us could write a letter uh, congratulating Holy Cross. This is huge. And I think Pitkin County should recognize it. and. And uh, the citizens of Aspen should know we've got the best public uh, electric utility anywhere. And, and I want to make sure everyone knows about this. It's huge. It, it was even shocked Auden Schendler when he heard about it, that this, is this, this deal that Brian <coughs> Hannigan, the, the uh, director of Holy Cross Energy, put together 
to uh, eliminate their need for uh, coal-fired power from the Comanche 3 power plant uh, and to switch it to a wind farm. Um, and they, they did it th through a trade with Gutzmann Energy who could help them provide the wind and pay for the, help them pay for the wind farm while also using the coal-fired energy when it's necessary for peak demand and you know when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining. Uh, so we're gaining a huge wind farm and we're moving toward getting off of coal nine years sooner than we thought we would. George, did you want to comment? Yeah, just add on to that. <laughs> add, on, <coughs> add on to that, Greg. I think that's that, that's great, and um, it also shows um, even with Excel, which is one of the largest uh, uh, providers for electricity, their their goal is to go to 100% renewable by 2050. It's still way out there, but uh, for them to get to that point means that they're going to get off coal and they're closing off closing down Comanche three. Um, so. Yeah, it's great. It's great news. I think uh, Colorado's realizing that we need to get off of fossil fuels. Renewable energy is the way to go. We have to start to mitigate and address climate change. So I commend uh, all the electric companies, co-ops, and the electric companies who are moving forward in this direction. Yeah. If, I, if I could just add one last thing to that. My, my question I have for myself, which I ask everybody who's talking about doing this sort of thing, is that is it going to be enough, and is it enough, and are we doing enough? And that's a question to keep asking ourselves. So, Steve. <clears throat> to tag on to the <laughs> same issue, in yesterday's news, uh, it told about how the United States emissions of carbon went up last year. It had been going down last year. It went on an upward trend again. Um, we need to do more. We need to do it faster. Um, a friend of mine who lives on a farm in Pennsylvania posted today that they have tornado warnings in Pennsylvania today. <laughs> wow. That's unusual. It's not tornado season. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's highly unusual. The weather is totally out of whack due to the, the effects of climate change. Uh, things are more extreme and... Um, uh, th that explains why we, sometimes we have a cold snap, even though the climate in general is warmer. We're having some polar vortexes coming down, and which normally would stay up in the Arctic. Um, and then one more point about Holy Cross's announcement about the, the wind farm. This will actually bring the city of Aspen closer to actually being 100% renewable electricity. They, they keep bragging how they are 100% solar electricity, I mean uh, renewable electricity, some of it's hydroelectric. But that's only for the city of Aspen, uh, the power, power plant, <coughs> which Electric serves, a fi I think, 55% of the city. The other 45% of the city of Aspen is, has service from Holy Cross Energy. So 45% of the city of Aspen has been using a large percentage of coal-powered electricity up until this deal today, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. this will get them further towards being 100, actually, in truth, 100% renewable electricity. It'll make us all honest. <laughs> So in, in light of your request for a letter, does the board support uh, drafting a letter to send Holy Cross? Sure. <coughs> John, can we have maybe uh, Greg work with Kara on that? <laughs> Happily. And we'll get a letter that we can s have Greg as chairman sign and we can send on to Holy Cross. Perfect. See, she's dumping work on me already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know how to shuffle that. And do you, do you need that to come back to the board or do you want us to draft? No, I think, I, think we, okay. I think we trust Greg and <coughs> Kara. Congratulatory. Yeah, yeah, thanks. That's a good idea. Are there any other comments from the commissioners? Um, I just want to say I want to thank um, everyone for their patience and tolerance of me being chair for the last this last year. We've had a lot that we went through with the county, and um, I think uh, things went well. We have a lot coming up for Greg and, and Steve to be taking on, and Kara. Kara's excited, as I said earlier. Um, it was a good year. I mean, the moving into this building was really a highlight for all of us. Um, we're very excited. The Veterans Park, you know, just was the icing on the cake, and um, so it was. It was a great year, and um, and again, I want to thank the voters of Picking County for supporting my election for four more years. 
And I can really now take a deep breath because it's been a long year, and I can look forward to a new grandbaby in May. So I'm happy to be moving to this seat. So, yeah. So the, it yeah. really is the hot seat. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's a hot seat. I actually, I think I have something here. Should we do this now? <laughs> well, uh, he's getting that. Oh. Yesterday, when we saw Tom Sardi's signature on the oh. on the page, and I, that got me curious. So when we were in the courthouse yesterday, the I went and looked and I counted up and Tom Sardi served for 18 years on the Board of County. Uh-oh, I'm going to beat him. You're getting close. You're not, <laughs> Patty's not quite there yet, but uh, wow, Oris Gerbaz served oh, for nice. 30 years as a county commissioner in Pitkin County. Oh, well, uh, you're not going to beat so that one. So you have one. ways to oh, go to catch Oris. These are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're presenting Patty with this. Uh, this you know, Bird of Paradise bouquet. was my dad's favorite put together by Charlotte. It wasn't my idea. I want to give Charlotte credit and John and everyone else who actually did this. I and, know. And, the, and then this is a check for $3 million and a <laughs> Tesla. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm actually going with the Karma Rivero, so it's okay. 130000 Oh, fine. That's even, that's, I'm yeah, glad you're Yeah, this is beautiful. Frugal. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. So, no, I'm not, I'm going to not cry. This was a great year, and I couldn't have done it without the support of everyone at this table and the county staff as a whole. And the county staff is a great organization to work with and to work for, as are the people of Pickin County. This is a great community to live in and to play in and to thrive in. So um, I'm excited to be moving forward. Um, so let's continue with our meeting. Right. You're not done yet. I'm going to take a deep breath. So first item on this agenda, and their consent item, single reading, the minutes of a regular meeting of December the 19th. Resolution appointing chair, vice chair, commissioner, representatives to various boards, committees, and authorities. Resolution approving the revision of the Picking County investment policy. Resolution appointing official custodians of county funds. And a resolution designating the official agenda posting place for the calendar year 2019. Are there any comments or concerns or questions from the members of the board? I'd like to pull uh, three and four off. Okay, and I would just like to cite on item number five that the official posting place will now be here at this building rather than the county courthouse. Correct. So for anyone who wants information about future agendas for Board of Commissioner meetings or other meetings, they will now be in our new building. So I would move to approve the minutes, uh, the resolution appointing the chair and vice chair and, and the representatives to the various boards and committees and the resolution designating the official agenda posting place as just so Said. I have a second. Second. Do I have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. I'm officially going to move over, and Greg, oh, so you can take the seats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are official. Okay. I'll slide your flowers over. <laughs> slide your name tags. All right. Your drinks. I know. Don't hide me because I was already the partially me. obscured commissioner in the Times today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Bring your chair with you. Have an adjust. Oh, we want to, oh, yeah. Yeah, we can swap chairs. We too. adjust our chairs specific to our. <laughs> so this is you. Am I being short? It's me. All right, I'll take your. Okay, your hold on, everybody. Don't move. That's you. Okay. This is me. That is you. Okay. Hi, George. Patty. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, you are in trouble now. <laughs> Closer to the hot seat. Um, okay, here we go. Oh, so we have to bring three and four up. So, um, uh, so we, we would introduce the resolution approving the revision of the Pitkin County Investment Policy with Ann Driggers and Tom Oaken. Welcome. <coughs> Thank you for being first on my agenda. We hope we don't disappoint. <laughs> <A new agenda. laughs> So, so my question, I, I'd like to just know what, how, how much different will be the investment of our funds under the new system compared to what Tom has been doing. Um, I think it'll be similar, fairly similar, but uh, there must be some differences. Yeah, the primary differences um, are as our investment advisors discussed with you in work session about a month ago, um, that uh, 
in, in the past, I mostly invested in FDIC insured certificates of deposit and uh, some treasuries, some agencies, but primarily CDs because they had higher rates. Uh, the investment advisors would uh, like to diversify that more, have more in treasuries and agencies, uh, and as well uh, expanding out to some corporate securities, um, which previously we were not authorized to invest in. State law authorizes it, but our investment policy didn't because that requires some credit research uh, to make sure, you know, that that's a secure investment. Um, they have the ability to do that, uh, and so those are the primary changes. Uh, they'll extend into that a little bit as well. They're suggesting as well that um, we decrease the amount of liquid funds that we have and invest more for a longer term in order to get a slightly higher rate. Um, and so that's the other change in policy primarily. Mm -hmm. um, how much uh, is there any anticipation of what greater rate of return we'll get, like a percentage rate of return we might possibly get? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might be fairly similar. A fraction of a percent, perhaps, fairly or maybe one, initially, one um, or two percent? Because we're, uh, you know, our, our CDs, our, our current portfolio of CDs goes out to three-year maturities, uh, or slightly less than that. I quit investing, I think, in October out there uh, in order to build funds for the new investment advisor. Uh, but because those are just rolling off over the next several years and being replaced with other uh, investments, It'll be a gradual change. Mm -hmm. And as well, interest rates have increased over the last two years now uh, since, uh, you know, so we will be putting uh, those maturities to work at higher interest rates than they were invested at before. Mm -hmm. So you should see an increase, but how much? I don't know. Um, they also charge a fee which comes off the top of our earnings, it's only about a tenth of a percent. Uh, so it's not a whole lot, but uh, that decreases the earnings slightly. And um, one more technical question. With the raises in the rates from the Federal Reserve Board, will that, that probably will have more effect on what we can actually get for, from the different investments? Is that true? Yes, absolutely. That, that would have a huge effect on the rate of return we would get. Yeah, it uh, it affects primarily short-term rates, and that's where we're invested. Uh -huh. uh, we the the new policy, our prior policy, only allowed us to go out three years. Uh, the new one says five years. Um, they said they would use that very cautiously and only in certain circumstances where where it made sense to extend that far. Um, so, I mean, three to five years is still short term um, and is influenced by the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Questions? I'm good. Um, so, um, I'd, I'd love to ask one question of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Anne. How often are we going to hear from this? these investment advisors, this is the new um, group. Well, as much as you'd like. And I think when they presented before, we agreed um, about every six months. Um, so the strategy and what they're doing will be discussed each every six months. And that will help, you know, guide where they're, they're going. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'd move uh, to approve the resolution uh, approving the revision of the uh, Pickens County investment policy. I will second. 
Okay, we've got a second. Um, uh, all in favor? Any further discussion? Oh, thank you. <laughs> you should be reminding me of this that. a lot. <laughs> Any further discussion on this? No. Okay, we'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you very much for coming. Um, then on the we've got the next one. On the next one, uh, resolution appointing official custodians of county funds. Oh, right. So there that's why they and didn't get Andrews up and move. And readers and newly retired, or maybe not quite yet retired, Tom <laughs> Oaken. What is the timetable, and uh, <laughs> for the actual transition? Because you're still custodian as per this resolution, but um, I'm, I'm a little confused. Um, actually, the uh, custodian, official custodian <coughs> resolution that's in place prior to this one uh, named the treasurer and the finance director separately as official custodians. Um, that position, as you know, is being combined uh, and so this resolution names the finance director treasurer as an official custodian and adds the chief deputy uh, treasurer as a second official custodian. Official custodians basically are authorized to open bank accounts, brokerage accounts, uh, investment accounts for us. So. Um, they need to be designated by the board to have that authority. Um, so all of those institutions say, where's your authority to open this account? That resolution is what gives Ann now that authority. And the chief deputy treasurer, who is uh, Sid Toffany. Mm -hmm. and, and that so would be effective upon the board approving the resolution. The re this resolution, right. Okay. Questions? Good. Okay. Do we need a motion for this? So I'd move to approve the appointment of the official custodians. Second. We've got a second from George. Any other discussion? Okay. We're going to call it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. That. Thank you for coming in. Up next, we have a resolution designating the official agenda post. Oh, no. We've done that. We're going back to. Oh, we're done with this. Thank you. Yes, we're, yeah, moving, we're, right done. we're along. moving right along. Can I just add something real quick? Please. Just, I want the board to know, be patient with me. It's really hard when you step down from being chair to just speak. So oh. remind me I need to raise my hand oh. and wait in line because it's not, it's, even when I'm not no. chair, it's not easy for me to do that. <laughs> so I just want to hope you be patient with me. If I start to open my mouth, remind me I have to be polite. We always thought you had to be polite. <laughs> we need to get Greg up. Gavel with a really long <laughs> handle. That he no, the like handle only needs to be about a yeah, foot long. Be very, he can just smack, he can just reach <laughs> over. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to open up individual consideration items. Um, uh, what we have up individual consideration items. First reading set for public hearing on January 23rd, 2019, is a resolution approving an interorganizational agreement for ongoing support for care of low income populations in Pitkin County and Southwestern Eagle County through support of Mountain Family Health Center's Basalt Clinic. And we have Karen Kuhneman and Gary Shala. Thank you for coming. Yeah, Karen Kuhneman, Public Health Director. And Gary Shala, Development Director, Mountain Family Health Centers. So we're here for the first reading of the interorganizational agreement for ongoing integrated care for low-income populations in Pitkin and Western Eagle County. Um, through the support of Mountain Family Health Center's Basalt Clinic. And um, I'm just going to start with a little bit of background to get us to where we are today and then let Gary um, chime in um, after that. So as you all know, affordable health care is a pretty significant thing across the country and Pickin County isn't um, immune to this. And in fact, we see some of the highest rates of insurance um, in the nation here. And so really this um, four year and longer, as I've learned, um, project has really um, manifested in a way that allows um, folks that are low income, Medicaid, uninsured, 
to get access to really quality integrated care. And when we say integrated care, we mean mental, dental, and physical health all in the same same location. Um, all of you were able to attend the grand opening on Monday, and it's really through the work of this board and through John Peacock and Nan Sundin and many, many um, folks before me who made this a reality. And so it kind of gives me um, goosebumps to be here right now to be able to present this IGA um, as just a spokesperson for the work. And um, so the history really started with um, the community health assessment and, and recognizing that access to, to care was still a significant issue in this community. There was a task force that was convened. That task force really started to work on goals and from that um, with, with Ross and with Nan and with Liz Stark, um, and many others in the community came together and identified the clinic as a, as a potential solution to one of these significant issues. And so through then um, work from John and Dave Ressler at the hospital, Ross with Mountain Family, um, really came together and, and worked, <laughs> worked for a long time to make this happen. A lot of negotiations and trying to figure out how to financially make it viable. Um, and so here we are today bringing in a fourth partner, which is Eagle County, um, and really recognizing the Western population, Western part of that, that county's population over in the Roaring Fork Valley. And so now there's a, a fourth partner, which is really exciting to help support financially to have a sustainable clinic long term. Um, and I have a lot of um, facts and figures around this that I can share with you. John has the intricate knowledge of how all of the finances played out, but ultimately um, with bringing in Eagle County, the impact to Picking County was lessened, um, which was really nice. Um, so ultimately Eagle County is um, contributing between 53 and $55,000 um, and um, Pitkin County is expected to contribute about 21, between 21 and $23,000. Aspen Valley Hospital is contributing 32,000. And um, this all is going toward operating cost of the clinic. So by bringing in Eagle County, it actually lessened Pitkin County's amount from the Healthy Community Fund. Um, so we've seen a decrease from 75,000 in 2018 to 20, between 21 and 24,000 in 2019. And so that's the budgetary impact. Um, the commissioners could, I guess, choose not to not to um, support this agreement. Um, but I would ask that um, you know, do you support the partnership <laughs> to provide high quality medical, dental, and behavioral health services to the residents of Pitkin and Western County, regardless of the ability to pay? And then I'll let um, Gary just talk a little bit about the impact to Mountain Family. Thank you. Well, I want to thank all of you and and to um, to the Aspen Valley Hospital and to Eagle County. Now, it's really a um, it's really a, a a really breaking ground, new ground, uh, in healthcare and in, and in collaborative efforts, and for everyone to have skin in the game. We see an increase in the uninsured in the last two years. Uh, we are the canary in the coal mine. We are on the ground, and so it's really important to have all these partners at the table to have this wonderful new facility that you were able to see earlier t earlier this week. Um, we really believe in that integrated care model. We really believe in bringing mental health, which I know is a concern to many of the commissioners, into that mix. This facility allows us to serve another 2,700, uh, 2,200 clients, uh, which will um, really impact that part of the community that, uh, that we see increasing. And it's not only the uninsured, but it's uh, those with insurance that at such high rates that they can't afford to really take advantage of their insurance. So we see a whole new population of uh, middle class citizens that will be looking to our services and we're there and we're open and we're ready to, to serve them with dental now in the Mid Valley and with more providers in the Mid Valley. And so we're just really excited about this. We hope the commissioners see the value of this long term and um, that you will vote for this after the second reading. Thank you. Questions? I have a question. Um, Correct me, because I think I might have been incorrect on Monday, but I thought we had some partnership of some level with Garfield County. Is that wishful thinking on my part? Um, yes. There, there, we do not have a partnership in, in here with uh, Garfield County for the Basalt Clinic. Now, Mountain Family Health does have a clinic located in Glenwood right, Springs. In and, and in Rifle. <clears throat> and in Rifle. And so 
there's there's um, as far as standing up this expanded facility and the ability to provide for the dental operatories and the behavioral health services. It is um, Aspen Valley Hospital, Picking County, Eagle County, and Mountain Family Health, of course, uh, really doing the work. But on a broader scope, we technically have an extended partnership through the facility we just opened with Mountain Va- Mountain Family Health in Glenwood Springs and in Gar- and in Rifle. Right, we do. So I wasn't totally off. I no. was no. just hoping that maybe we had more partnership opportunity, but um, it, it, is, it creates a broader spectrum partnership. And what it really is doing is creating a model. Um, so uh, we're in, in talks right now with Eagle County uh, on a uh, Edwards facility that will right. be or merely really match this with Vale Health, who is using Aspen Valley Hospital as their as their lead. So you've really created a model that's replicable and that we're already taking to, to um, communities around the Western Slope to say, hey, here's this wonderful, really interactive model. Here's how it works on the ground. Here's how it benefits the whole community. And then letting them uh, understand and, and look at their community and how it can best serve them. So a great model for the future. Can I also add, um, can you somebody explain, um, with Aspen Ski Company yesterday, or Monday, that was really, really heartwarming to hear what they have done. Um, and I'm not quite ex- ex- it's it's like their environmental fund, but their employees fund, but it's a community health fund, or I'm not sure what the name of it is exactly. So it's care- I believe it's Caring for Community. Uh, it is their employees' uh, foundational funding, and they uh, decided last year that Mountain Family would be a wonderful place for them to invest $100,000 as a challenge grant to us. And we were very excited that we could meet that challenge and they could announce it on our opening that we had matched their $100,000 in funding for the for the clinic. Give me goosebumps. So there was a $200,000 funding opportunity that came forward. Correct. And I want to thank the Aspen Ski Company for, for doing that. And um, I know they have these funds that their employees pitch in X amount per paycheck to the environmental and now to this caring community fund. So I think that's great. And I want to give them thanks publicly for 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 partnering with us on this. So um, I'm excited about this. I think the, the facility itself is amazing. Um, the blue stained wood was the first thing that caught my eye when we walked in, so I appreciate that. And um, I know working with Jeff Schroll in, in Eagle County will we'll have great results, so so thank you. Steve? Um, since we saw the photograph the other day of the clinic in Blackhawk in <laughs> the 1970s, <laughs> that made me think back to the days when there used to be hitching posts in the basalt when I moved there when I was a kid because people occasionally would ride a horse into basalt. And I noticed you haven't put a hitching post in front of the, <laughs> the new clinic in basalt, and maybe you should consider adding that. <laughs> you can certainly consider adding that design. Or if you're going to ride into town, just let me know, and I'll, I'll hold your horse for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was th- I thought he was going to ask about equine therapy. So. <laughs> what are you offering for the equestrian community? Yeah. Actually, we have a, I, I want to announce we have a new mascot uh, oh, as of... As of Monday, uh, Blue is now our new right. salt mascot. So <laughs> Blue Peacock. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. With the blue stained wood, it's going to make a great photo op. Yeah. Uh, uh, anything else on that? No, no, no. no Just great. honored oh, to inject a, a little I love it. history and humor into um, this. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, I was actually surprised. It's great to hear that our cost has actually gone down, our carrying cost of this, be, having Eagle as a partner. And that's want to thank Eagle County. And I think it's going to benefit all of us. Um, I was wondering, uh, the other thing I, I looked at, and I thought, wow, it's, we're, we're not putting in as much money as I thought we would have to in order to elevate the, the, the resilience of the health care in, in for this part of the community. And my, so my question is, going forward, how far can you project what the costs will be, and do you expect increases and you know what do we have to look forward to and you don't have to provide that now if you don't have it but I'm just thinking that's a question I have going forward uh, and, and so that's one of them Greg I think we'd you be wanna... happy to maybe make this an annual report to come back to you and yeah. and give you through our CFO or and COO and uh, and through Ross um, annual updates so you can see and then you can see the expansion you can see the usage you can see the the Great. numbers were a data-heavy organization. We're happy to present those and, to you. 
and for the board and the the public, um, we basically created a almost a risk corridor uh, kind of arrangement uh, in this agreement. And there are risks uh, as the number of we developed and approved an initial pro forma that estimated the number of Medicaid patients, the number of insured, the number of uninsured. Um, it's highly dependent on what happens with the Affordable Care Act, the exchanges, Medicaid expansion, those sorts of things. And so there are risks that could drive those um, operating gaps up. And so we entered into a risk corridor um, where we will be doing quarterly check-ins. Um, Karen will be taking over that on, on our side um, with the hospital and Mountain Family Health and now Eagle County to see how we're performing on revenues and expenditures to, to budget. If in any quarter um, our gap goes over 25% of what we're expecting, um, any one of the partners can require a corrective action plan, and, and that could take many different forms. And, and the corrective action plan could be us coming back and saying we, we see the number of uninsured going up, we think we need to put more in. It could mean waiting lists if, um, for uninsured. We, there, there are just a number of factors, and, and we could bring those back. But the agreement anticipates that. It sets up a process to have those conversations. It sets up the, the metrics that you know would drive us to um, either bring something back to you as a board or the hospital as a board or to Mountain Family Health in terms of service levels so we can manage it. And that's why you see those kind of expected to, to maximum. We do not expect a corrective action plan to, to be required for any more than, than two quarters, but we'll be watching that, um, and we'll be working with our partners. And as you know, um, insurance availability, Medicaid, all of these are in play, and so we're going to have to keep monitoring that. We went into this with our eyes wide open, and we created a risk corridor arrangement so we could manage it. Thank you. Thank you for that. If I could... Uh, follow up with my next question unless you have something else uh, uh, partnerships I we live in a, a community that has so many fantastic organizations that are doing great work whether mental health is what I've been focused on so I think about Hope Center and Mind Springs Health and Aspen Strong all these others and, and I understand you already have relationships developing so this will really be integrated not only in that you're providing these services but you're going to be working with everyone too, and I, I'm going to assume efficiencies come from that. Anything else you want to add? No, I think we're really proud of the the partnership we have both with with public health and and with the services here in the county. I think that um, having this new physical location, having uh, a really a, a home, will help to drive those relationships and those uh, community investments mm -hmm. that we can make and that we can help to partner with them. It was wonderful to take people upstairs and have the expanded now community room so that other partners uh, can be up there. The uh, expanded, um, what I'm calling group uh, mental health or educational rooms on the east side of the upstairs where you had offices before, uh, really uh, now offer all kinds of partnership agreements, uh, ways for other people to uh, use that building in a way that's, that's really for the community and about the community. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that. The, the, the last thing, <laughs> um, we had a great conversation earlier before this started today about the, just the synergies. You've, Mountain Family has some interesting developments happening in Eagle County that could translate into our valley somehow. So it sounds as if our communities now are going to be coordinated and working together in ways that you, you understand, but for the rest of us it will be a, a wonderful surprise regarding, uh, I think, working with the courts and the mental health programs, something Gary mentioned, very intriguing. and hadn't heard of that before. And so I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about this. Thank you. Um, should we, uh, do I need a, a motion here? I would be proud to make a motion and honored. I would like to make a motion approving a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners approving an intergovernmental, an interorganizational agreement between the Board of County Commissioners of Pitkin County and Aspen Valley Hospital, Eagle County, and Mountain Family Health Centers. 
Second. second. We have a second from Steve. Uh, discussion topic. Further discussion. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this is will set for public hearing on the 23rd. Of 23rd January. of January. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Thanks for coming in. That was great. What fun. How, congratulations again. Yeah, yeah. it was great. I, I encourage everybody in the community to go down and check this place out. Uh, okay, moving right along, individual consideration uh, items, uh, public hearing, second reading. We have a resolution authorizing a network operator agreement with Visionary Communications, Inc., DBA Mammoth Networks, for the purpose of managing the Pitkin County Middle Mile Broadband Network. Cara is here. And... And it says public hearing. Do I need to open a public hearing? At some point. Not At some yet. point. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> I can go down my we'll list. Coach ya. Thank you. Well, oh, Jeanette already has. I just need to read her instructions. <laughs> Thank you for being yeah. here. Please introduce uh, yourselves. Kara Silbernagel with the manager's office. And I'll Evan Biaggi, uh, VP of Colorado Operations for Mammoth Networks. So before you guys today is the second reading of the network operator agreement with Mammoth Networks to manage the broadband middle mile network. Um, this is really the big cornerstone to actually start to move towards getting internet service out there with Mammoth on board as network operator. They will manage um, basically all of the infrastructure that Pitkin County has been working on for some years. So the assets on the tower, the wireless connectivity point, and then at that point, the county will hand off um, operations to Mammoth, and they will be working directly with ISPs to actually deploy um, internet service to rural areas throughout the county and actually the region. And I'll just, that's the agreement in short. Um, it is a revenue shareback agreement, so basically, the, in exchange for the infrastructure that the county has set up, Mammoth will then be charging a fee to ISPs to access that, and a shareback of those funds will come back into the county's system. Um, it's kind of on an accelerated or incremental uh, schedule, depending on how, how many subscribers come on board, with the idea of once we get to um, build out of the towers that we have right now that it would be about a 50-50 share. Um, and so with that, I would hand it over to Evan if he has anything else to add. Yeah, I think this is just a, a very important milestone in this project. I know we I've been here several times and, uh, you know, this has been a long process to get to this point. But uh, I see this as a turning point in the project. We're actually to the degree that we've got bill of materials uh ordering of equipment is is coming soon uh so things are uh dare i say imminent that we'll actually have some services that uh, will be provided so having uh this agreement in place is a you know a very important step in that process and we can then uh start moving forward with the selection of isps to be the public facing entities uh, for providing service we can start uh, construction, and we can really move the, the entire project forward uh, now that we've gotten past uh, you know, everything that we've done up to this point. So we're very excited and really look forward to, uh, to, to getting this thing going. Great. All right, George? Yeah, thanks, Evan. Thanks, Kara and Phyllis, for all your work on this over the last many years. Uh, Evan, what, which towers are we going to, uh, which locations are we going to kick off, start with? So we, we have a phased approach right now. Uh, phase one has three locations. Uh, they are uh, primary sites that already have uh, necessary infrastructure in place. Uh, the three locations are going to be Crown Mountain, uh, Williams Peak, and Elephant Mountain. So those three are the, the, the first that will be uh, deployed. Um, with others uh, following suit, there, there are still a couple towers uh, that we just received, uh, you guys received uh, grant funding to uh, rehabilitate or reconstruct. Certainly, we have to wait for that to occur before we can deploy services off of those, but the first three are, are Crown Williams and Elephant. Yeah, I asked this before, but I forget what the answer was. So, for example, Crown Mountain, uh, currently there is broadband <coughs> service available, but it's uh, line of sight. And so with the, with the new uh, systems, Will we have 360 degree access to, for providers to uh, reach uh, residents? 
Yeah, um, 360 degrees on every tower site doesn't necessarily make 100% of sense. You know, we looked at where the population uh, was, and we used uh, sectors pointed in those areas. The technologies that we plan to deploy will be utilizing um, LTE-based uh, uh, technologies and in frequencies that allow for what we call near line of sight or non line of sight uh, propagation. So we're hopeful that the, the propagation studies, and trust me, we've done a, a, a bunch of these, are that we're going to reach a, a number of folks that currently don't have options today. That was really the, the whole goal of this project is to get out into those uh, hard to reach areas um, and underserved areas. The, 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 the three that we're deploying um, are, you know, based on a number of different factors. And these three are essentially what we're considering primary sites. Primary sites will then have the ability to feed future secondary sites that are, you know, smaller in nature but have more uh, depth into those underserved and unserved areas. So we have, uh, what is it, a three or four phased plan that we've, we've been working on that includes deploying at primary and these secondary towers to get into, uh, you know, a number of areas. And I think over time we're going to, you know, potentially have to, you know, look at even additional areas that, that haven't been planned yet. Um, we'll uncover certain holes in areas where there's a, a high demand. We we're actually just in a meeting this morning talking about that, that, uh, you know, as we roll this out, it'll become apparent where still, what areas still need coverage. Um, and then we can devise plans to uh, augment those areas. Great, thank you. Steve, questions? Um, what is the rollout date for doing the phase one? I'm, I'm having <laughs> some citizens, I live down in the vicinity of Williams Hill, and so yeah. people are chomping at the bit. They're anxious to know, you know, when will they be able to enroll in this? Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I'll, I'll take a stab at answering that. You know, this project having so many different factors in, okay, this was a step today, right? We have to get this network operator agreement in place. Well, that's one step in many steps that we've had along the way. And we're, we're getting to the point now where we're down to, you know, working through procurement, delivery of equipment, um, and then most importantly, installation timelines. So. Uh, the weather can be a big factor in that. Access to these sites is a big factor. As we know, Elephant is uh, pretty much off the grid. Um, we're going to work as quickly as we can to get these sites active. We're, you know, this to me is green light go. We'll do everything that we can to, uh, to deploy as quickly as possible. I, I hesitate to say we'll have services up by April 1st or uh, you know, May 1st, I, I, I don't know what that specific day will be. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have to go through uh, some agreements with the ISPs that we plan to have on the network. So there, there's a couple steps yet to, 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 to take before we can get to the point of actually connecting customers. But uh, we're, I don't know, I, I, I say we're on the 10 or 5 yard line about to get into the end zone. Uh -huh. Sure. And what I've been roughly saying is spring, early summer is by the time we get the equipment, the equipment installed, the um, ISP agreements and all that ordering service is that's kind of the tentative timeline we see for those first phases and connecting it back to the backhaul that goes all the way into Denver. Mm -hmm. So soon well, we, not we, we, not tomorrow but soon enough hopefully yeah it's getting closer <laughs> yeah i can tell yeah that's great I have one question. are there any changes in the agreements from first reading yes there are minor <laughs> there are minor changes to the indemnity and to the terms so clean up corrections yeah clean up and corrections thank you <laughs> george question no i'm good i'm good um i just uh just so we can explain this, so I understand it better and the public does as well. This is middle mile. The ISPs are going to figure out the last mile, I assume, to where people can actually hook in. Um, I'm a, a combination of wireless, wired, we don't know yet what that, what that means, what that entails. Uh, and I'm well, wondering, I mean, yeah, go ahead, please go I ahead. I can give you kind of a, a quick primer on that. So, so this actually, um, Middle mile and then backbone 
was created through all of the primary sites in collaboration with the, the public safety project and whatnot. We're tying into that to create the, the initial backbone for the wireless access network. Okay, so that wireless access network is the last mile technology that okay. will be deployed. And it is uh, being done so in an open access fashion, which means that there will be, uh, uh, you know, a couple of providers uh, that will access that wireless infrastructure to be, be able to provide services to the end users. We as the network operator will manage that entire infrastructure and work with those ISPs to uh, make sure that the system works and to tie it all together back to the middle mile uh, that, that we have established as well. So it is a, for this project, it's an open access uh, wireless network. Um, there aren't many of those out there in existence, which was, you know, part of the challenges that we've just overcome here with this network operator agreement is that we're inventing something that doesn't, you know, there's no rule book on this out there. There's not a lot of uh, case studies on, on similar situations. Uh, so it will be a wireless only uh, project. Um, there are a couple other components with point-to-point uh, -point type wireless services that, that can feed either larger anchor institutions or other ISPs or, um, you know, other entities that are, you know, not just a single end user type connection. Right. Thank you. I, I know there have been, uh, we've had questions in the past about uh, installing, you know, the final tower, the little tower, say, I think of east of Aspen because that's who I hear from most. <laughs> uh, you know, where do we put a tower? How is, how is the tower, how are those final tower location uh, ag agreements or discovery, how is that coming along? Do we, do we feel pretty comfortable that you're on track, for, on schedule for finding the locations you need? Yeah, I, you know, I, we have a, a handful of, of those secondary tower sites that, that we've identified that we know are, um, you know, very suitable locations and we have plans to build those out. Um, have we identified every secondary tower at this point? No. I think that they're, they're certainly, as, as this project continues to, to expand, I think there will be additional secondary towers that, that may need to be erected to, to provide services in those areas. Um, but I think that based on our uh, projections, and I, I don't recall the exact numbers, but I feel like we had pretty strong uh, penetration numbers and percentage of, of population numbers when we did all of the analysis. Okay, great. And I would just add, you know, we don't see an end date of infrastructure building being done. We only have, I think we have phase one, two, and three of the towers, but knowing that as the really the goal of this will be as um, the project is successful and more people are on board, then we'll get more demand for more holes and can um, start to fill those, what those, that last 5% gap really is. Right. Any other questions, comments? So we want to open this up for public hearing. Uh, anybody from the public want to comment? It looks like we do not. Uh, I'm going to uh, close the public hearing then. And I can entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve this resolution authorizing the network operator agreement with Visionary Communications doing business as Mammoth Networks I'll for second. the purpose of managing our middle mile <laughs> broadband network. I'll second and that. We too. have a second. <laughs> uh, discussion for, from the board? Not seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We're Thank done. You. We got a deal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming in, Evan. Nice to see you. Appreciate again. the, the, uh, the clear uh, descriptions from both of you Aye. on this. <laughs> Helps all of us. Okay. Up next, uh, individual consideration items emergency ordinance first reading with confirmatory hearing on January 23rd. Uh, we have a land use item. Uh, now, this has been. Um, you need to make else. a motion to continue to January 23rd. Thank you. I'm looking for that motion. I need a motion. You just Did you just make that motion? Well, first, um, I believe I spoke with the gentleman her earlier who would like to take the opportunity make for public, public comment. comment. So we Got could it. probably open the public comment and continue it along with the... Yeah, please come, please come forward. Thank you. We're opening the public hearing on this. Thanks, Patty. Um, and please identify yourself. Hi, my name is Mike Tangway. I live at um, 573 Conundrum Creek Road, and um, I'm here to 
uh, get some clarification if there's an approval for a, a house next door to me. Um, I've done my best to read this and understand it, but it's not what I do. So, um, it it from what I've read here, it looks like uh, this resolution um, is a, um, granting two parcels: this ranch parcel and the Mesa parcel. Uh, excuse me a second, Mike. We've got here whispering. I, I think we want to have one. I'm just going to see down. if I can get somebody from Congress. Great. To come yeah, thank we you. Need sure a planner we can. to answer those questions. Well, maybe there I mean, are I can right. find out between now and the next no, meeting. No, we won't. We but we I was just wondering, John, before you go, I mean, this, this is going to be continued, so we have not seen the presentation ourselves yet. Okay. So we I'm can. not sure we need to get into a longer conversation. Um, well, perhaps I can. Uh, well, could I? With you yeah, okay. I just wanted to clarify, just in case you, he wasn't available to come back on the 23rd. So um, you can always submit. Can he submit things to the public record through an email to staff? Mm -hmm. And maybe then staff can verify and answer your questions or provide that information at our next meeting. So we can give you, um, I just thought of this, an email sure. address for staff. But we really needed you to have you come forward to, you know, as part of public hearing. But um, we can give you the, the contact information for staff. So, so what you're saying is I would contact somebody at staff and they would answer the question. Yeah, because we have not even seen the application come before us yet. Okay. Well, we, can, we can helpful. help do that between now and first reading and public hearing. Okay. All right. So the answer is to ask someone else. <laughs> 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 the answer is if you just hang around for a minute, we'll be done with our meeting and we can give you that information. Okay. But if, I mean, if you could do a verbal, like what are your, if you have specific concerns. Well, I live next door and I, but you know, um, I uh, would rather not have a house next door um, because of the water tables rather high there and I worry about a septic system affecting, you know, the well on that that That's close right. um, but other than that um, I do su support the application coffee has been a great neighbor and you know so we we'll, like we'll each give other. him the contact information for for staff right. and you can so we can make sure your comments are at least yeah. are part of it and, okay. and you'll have a chance there's to speak one other with. concern yeah. that um, like I said I did my best to understand it but it is zoned AFR 10 so the the lots are supposed to be 10 acres and this place next door wouldn't be it would be more like two so i think it's because it's coming through subdivision but that's another good question for staff okay that's going to come up you'll we'll have a chance to yeah. hear about that it's a little bit of a longer answer than that but right. yeah. you can get right. into the planning office and get okay. so we'll give you the contact information in just a minute <laughs> All right. i'll Thank walk you up there right after probably in five minutes i'm guessing okay. Um, right. right, we're almost done. Uh, right. So I will make a motion to continue this and to con continue the public hearing to uh, January the 23rd. Second. Okay, all in fi uh, discussion for the discussion. <laughs> Did we need, Jeanette, just question, uh, we didn't really read this publicly in. We've got it, we're, we're in the, I want to make yeah. sure we're in the record. Do we need, should, okay, I just want to make Good sure point. that we're doing this properly. Um, no further discussion, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Continue till de January 23rd. Thank you. All right. Um, open discussion is up next. Boy, we're, that was a short one today. You guys are going I easy know, on me. <laughs> See how easy it's going to be with me as the chair? See, I'm going to like this. <laughs> Streamlining everything. I don't have any open discussion. Anyone else? Just uh, real quick, I did miss one thing to draw your attention to on future agendas. On the 14th, uh, you'll see that there's a beam signing for the new ambulance. That's facility. Monday at 12.30? 12.30, I believe. That will be Valentine's Day, so you're going to be <coughs> red pens. We will have no, red no, 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 that's the wrong month. Oh, January 14th. Ah. That's like well, January. that's why that's why Greg and I are always in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get it wrong no matter what. <laughs> You could proclaim that Valentine's Day will be held a month That's early. right. No, because it's just my what granddaughter's power do I have birthday. Here? <laughs> We're not ready for a birthday party on Monday yet. Okay. That's all I have. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's so would you entertain a motion to adjourn, I Mr. would entertain Chair. a motion to adjourn this meeting. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you job. for indulging me. You did it. You did it. Whew, that was a tough one. Yeah. It gets easier. George is shaking his head over there. It's like, oh my God, how many more I years of this? Ambulance barn event on the 14th. Thank you very much.